Jada and Stitches show. We are channeling some strong nostalgic summer vibes around here lately. Last week we made ourselves a romantic hair kerchief, perfect for wearing on a picnic, and this week we've got something for all the book lovers. We're going to make a bookmark, a really pretty classy looking one. Bookmarks are the perfect summer project because they are small and lightweight, you can take them with you, they don't feel hot when you're working on them, they're a short project, and you can use up all of your super fine weight fingering weight yarn or even get into your crochet thread like I did with this one. This is the same project, the same pattern, it's made with two different lightweight, one's a lightweight yarn, super lightweight, and one's a crochet thread, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in the materials section. But both of them use the cookies or big dot stitch which is the May stitch in our Mighty Mile a Minute calendar blanket. So this is kind of a neat way to use some of that stitchery that we've been learning this year and make something really pretty and useful too, especially if you know people who are really into books or just love to take a book with them on a day to the beach or a walk through the woods and uh, maybe do a little Instagramming. <laughs> So that's what we're up to today. We're going to grab our hooks, we're going to grab our yarn, we're going to head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch it up together. In order to make our bookmarks, I'm using less than 30 yards of a size one weight crochet thread. This is also the same size as a one weight yarn, or a super fine weight, fingering weight, sock weight, something like that. And I've got one in a nice pink. This is cotton. You want a pair of scissors and a yarn needle, and the hook I'm using is a 2.25 millimeter. It's also known as a B or a 1 in the US, possibly a 13 if you have an old UK hook. I made one earlier using a size 10 crochet thread. So that's a 10 crochet thread, and it's very fine, very lacy. You've got that real old-fashioned Victorian look, so if you want to try that with the fine weight thread, that's what it looks like in a size 10, and I used a 1.5 millimeter hook for that. It's also known as a steel hook 7 or a 2, but once you get down to this sort of tiny sized hook, it's whatever you can handle. <laughs> so whatever you can still see and whatever makes a stitch you like the look of. So that's what I used for that. So choose your thread size and your hook and we can get started. Visit our shop and purchase a pattern. You'll help support our show and we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. We're going to begin with a slip knot, and we're going to chain 12 to start. So if you've made the Mighty Mile a Minute calendar blanket along with us, then the whole first part of this bookmark is going to seem very familiar because this is the May strip pattern. We want 12 chains in total, and we're going to find the 8th one back from the hook. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, that's my 8th chain back from the hook right there, and into that chain we're going to double crochet 5 times. So 5 double crochet into that 8th chain from the hook. If you would like to see this pattern done uh, with a larger hook and a larger yarn, because it is a little tricky to see some of the smaller work. You can watch the May edition, the Big Dots or Cookies stitch of our Mighty Mile a Minute calendar blanket. We are doing exactly the same sort of beginning, we're just not making as many rows or as many cookies. So five double crochet into that eighth chain back from the hook, skip over to the last chain and double crochet into it. And that completes row one. That's also, oops, very similar to what a, all the odd rows look like. 
There we go. Double crochet. Working small isn't super easy, but it does have beautiful results. That's row one complete. This cookie stitch consists of two rows that repeat regularly, so we're going to start row two or an even row. All even rows begin with a chain five. And the chain five counts as a double crochet and a chain two for a space. Turn your work and across those five double crochets from the previous row, we're going to work a double crochet five stitches together stitch. And the point of that is to sort of have the bottom being open and the top being closed. So the row two kind of closes in or makes the top part of a circle for our big dot or our cookie. We're going to yarn over, pick up a loop in that first stitch, just like you would if you were going to double crochet. Yarn over, pull back through two loops. So you're working the first half of that stitch, but you're not working the rest of it. Yarn over, pick up a loop in the next stitch along that fan. Yarn over, pull back through two. So you work the, work the first half of that second double crochet. Repeat for the next three. So yarn over, pick up a loop, yarn over, pull back through two. So that's three double crochets partially worked. Yarn over, pick up a loop in the next stitch, yarn over, pull back through two loops. There's four partially worked double crochets. Yarn over, pick up a loop in the last stitch, yarn over, pull back through two. So you've worked the first half of five double crochets. You should have six loops on your hook. And now we're going to yarn over and pull back through everything. So I find it's nice to kind of hold on to the whole dot <laughs> and just tug down gently as I pull my hook back through all those loops. And that closes in our dot and gives us a cookie. Chain two. And to finish the row, you're going to find the top of the chains from the previous row. So it's going to be the chain that sits right next to the edge of that double crochet. Just turn it towards you if you have trouble seeing it. And grab the top of it, grab a loop, whatever, to get the top of that turning chain and double crochet. So that is one complete cookie or big dot made. You've got a five double crochet fan on the odd row or the first half of the cookie and then you have a double crochet five stitches together on the second row or the even row of the cookie and that completes your cookie. Let's do one more together. Every odd row begins with a chain three. That counts as a double crochet. Turn your work. Into the top of the cookie from the previous row, you're gonna pull this side and you're gonna look for that space that opens up right there on top of the cookie. So that little space right there. And you're gonna work five double crochets into the top of the cookie, but you want that space that sits sort of towards the end of the row. So not the first space you see, the second space. Five double crochet into the same place. So the very middle of that cookie. Then you're going to skip two chains. Remember we want that space to be on either side of the cookie. Skip two of the turning chains and find the third. And if it's the third or the fourth or the, doesn't matter, just try to skip away from the edge of that fan. Aim for the middle of those turning chains and double crochet into it and you get that shape. That's an odd row. Every odd row is the same. Chain three to begin. Five double crochet into the top of the cookie from the previous row. Skip two chains, double crochet into the next chain to complete the row. Row two, or an even row, completes our cookie. We chain five to begin. The chain five counts as a double crochet. Chain two. Turn your work and now you're going to double crochet five stitches together across that fan from the previous row. So yarn over pick up a loop in the first stitch, work the first half, yarn over, pick up a loop in the next stitch, work the first half, yarn over, pick up a loop in the next stitch, work the first half, yarn over, pick up a loop in the fourth stitch, work the first half, yarn over, pick up a loop in the last stitch, work the first half, pause, you should have five half worked double crochets there, six loops on your hook, yarn over, pull back through everything. 
Chain two, that takes you away from the top of that cookie and creates a nice little space. And then into the top of the chain three from the previous row, you're going to double crochet. So that's the chain right next to the top of that fan from your odd row. So odd even, odd even, odd even. We're going to make 10 cookies in total. So 10 cookies, that's two rows per cookie, so 20 rows in total. We've done four already, so there's four rows or two cookies. You're going to do eight more cookies on your own or 16 more rows. Remember, odd, even, odd, even. And I'll catch up with you at the top. Twenty rows in total or ten complete cookies. So that's what you've got. You'll have twenty posts or twenty spaces running down the side, each side of your cookie thing. So on the side of your cookie you've got two big spaces per cookie. So keep that in mind. Or two posts on either side of a complete cookie. There'll be 20 on each side. We're going to work our border now. Our border consists of two rows. First row is all V stitches and the second row is mostly single crochets to just finish it off. But we'll get to that. So to begin we're just going to start where we finished off our 20th row. We're going to slip stitch into that first big space just like that. And we're going to start by working down the first long side. We're going to chain four to begin. The chain four counts as a double crochet, chain one, and into the same space you're going to double crochet. So in this pattern a v-stitch is double crochet, chain one, double crochet, all worked into the same space. And that's all you're going to do in each of those big spaces all the way down the side of your bookmark. So into the next space you're working around the post, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Easy breezy. Next cookie, there's two spaces. You're going to work a v-stitch in the edge of each of them, so around the first post. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Next space, here it is right there. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. You're going to do that all the way down the edge. You'll have 20 V stitches at the end of the row, and it'll look like that. That's a V stitch in the edge of every space all the way down the side. So by the time you get to the bottom, so your, by your second last big space you'll have 19 v-stitches and into that big space, the big corner space at the bottom, we're going to work a v-stitch. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and then we want to turn the corner. We're going to chain two. Into that same space, working across the bottom now, we're going to v-stitch or double crochet, chain one, double crochet, So that turns our little corner and if you have trouble sort of spotting the chain two space you can take a moment and put a little pin or a little piece of yarn or something through there just so it's easier to spot when we come around for row two of our border. Into the bottom of that cookie we're going to work a v-stitch. And into the next big corner, same thing as this corner, v-stitch. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain two, that turns the corner and we're now working along the other long side into the same space, a v-stitch. And I'm just going to work over top of my little short tail, but you can leave yours out and weave it in later. And just like the other side now, you're going to identify every big space along the edge. There will be 20 of them. We just finished with the first, so you've got 19 more. You're going to put a v-stitch in each of them. And I'll see you up at the top. Once 
to get all the way back up to the top, we're going to treat the top spaces like we did the bottom. So there's our big corner space that we haven't used yet. And so into that space, you're going to finish off the long side of V-stitches with a V-stitch. You're going to chain two. That turns the corner. And into the same space, we're going to work another V-stitch. So V-stitch, chain two, V-stitch. That leaves the top of our cookie. So you're going to find the top. You're going to lean kind of to the other side of it, but at this point it doesn't really matter. So just get into the top of that last cookie, wherever is comfortable to put your hook. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And that brings us up to the space where we started. So there's the V-stitch we started with. Here's our big space. We're going to work a V-stitch into that same space that we began in. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And before we finish this row, we want to create our last little chain two corner. So two chains. And then we're going to grab this little V-stitch here, which is the chain four double crochet that we began with. You're going to find the third chain and you're going to join with a slip stitch. And there you go. That is row one of the border complete. And we're going to step into row two now. It's very simple, but it does require you to pay attention to your V-stitches. So sometimes you might want to stop and go, am I in a V-stitch or is that the middle of a V-stitch? V-stitch is the two stitches that their feet kind of sit together in a space. Then there's the space between V-stitches. See that? So there's a space in between your V-stitches, but if you're confused, just pull it apart and look for the two little feet sitting together, all nice and neat and tidy like a little cat in its little space. So the bottom of the V-stitch, that'll identify your V-stitch, and then you can see the space in between. So we've joined with a slip stitch to the top of the chain four. We're going to slip stitch into this chain one space, which is the V-stitch right next to us, just to start. We're going to chain one and into the same V-stitch space, we're going to work a single crochet, a chain one, and a single crochet all into that V-stitch. So single crochet, chain one, single crochet into that space, the chain one space that's the middle of a V-stitch. Then you're going to look for the space between V-stitches. So there it is there. You're going to slip your hook through it and you're going to slip stitch. Not too tight, not too loose. The next thing you come to should be a V-stitch. And if you're confused, just pull it apart, look for the little feet, think of a cat with his little paws sitting together right there in that space. That's the chain one space we want. It's the middle of the V-stitch. And into the middle of the V-stitch, you're gonna go single crochet, chain one, single crochet. So into the middle of every single V-stitch, single crochet, chain one, single crochet. Pull out, look for the space between V-stitches. So there's two feet together, there's two feet together. Here's the space in between. Hook goes through the space, just gently slip stitch. Not too tight, not too loose. And we're gonna create just this darling little, tiny little peak, it peaked, it's gonna look a bit like a picket fence <laughs> running all the way around our bookmark. Look for your next V-stitch. There's the feet together, there's the space. Single crochet, chain one, single crochet. Look for the space between V-stitches, there it is there, and slip stitch. You're gonna repeat that all the way down, and I'll catch up with you at the chain two space at the bottom. That single crochet, chain one, single crochet into every V-stitch and a slip stitch into the space between V-stitches. You're gonna do that all the way down. You'll have 20 little sharp peaks <laughs> running all the way down the edge of your bookmark. Every single time you get to a chain two space, remember there's four of them in the corners. Into the chain two space, you're going to slip stitch, not too tight, not too loose. Chain three, and slip stitch. So slip stitch, chain three, slip stitch, all into the chain two corner space. Then you come back to your next V-stitch. You can tell because the little feet sit together in a space. Single crochet, chain one, single crochet.
look for the space in between, here it is there, slip stitch. So same thing, you're going to treat every single V-stitch the same, single crochet, chain one, single crochet into the middle of it. You're going to slip stitch in between them when you finish with a V-stitch, look for the space between that and the next V-stitch. Continue with this little pattern, and every single time you get to a corner, chain two space, here we are in the next one, you're going to slip stitch, chain three, and slip stitch. And that's just going to give our little corners just this cute little pico. And there we go. All right, you're going to repeat that all the way around. I'll catch up with you at the end of the row. I'm almost finished. I've worked up the last long side. You just sort of pull out your little points. You can block it later if you like. Made my little pico in my third corner, put my little picket fence points across those three V stitches in the top. That brings me up to the last chain two corner. So I'm going to slip stitch, chain three, and slip stitch all into the same corner. I'm going to slip stitch into the bottom of that, like the find the first single crochet you made, or just a piece of that little tiny picket fence. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just want to slip stitch to kind of close off the row. And then you can fasten off and weave in that tail. While you're weaving in your tail, take a moment to just sort of pull out your four corners, flatten your little picket fence all the way down the edges of your bookmark. There we go. Oh my gosh, that is so pretty. So there's our bookmark made. Let's weave in our tail and we'll make a little tiny tassel for it too. To make our little tassel, first you want to cut two lengths of your thread that are about 25 centimeters or 10 inches long. So two lengths. Then you're going to take your remaining thread, you're going to pinch it between your thumb and forefinger, and you're going to wrap it a few times around your three fingers, tightly held together. Don't, don't wrap too tightly. But you're going to do this, I don't know, 12 times, maybe 15 times, not too many times, until you have sort of what you think might look like a nice thickness for a tassel. When you're done, bring your yarn up to the same thumb and forefinger and cut it. You're going to slowly pull your middle finger out and pinch the top so that you can sort of see right through the hole. You want to kind of keep control of all those threads. Take the first thread and just poke it through the middle there. Tug it down to the bottom. And we're going to tie a little knot. So you're going to make sure that the top ends are kind of aligned. So even up your ends. And we're going to tie a little knot. So we're going to wrap that around our finger, pull the loops, both of them through, and then very carefully you're going to pull and push the knot back up against the edge of your tassel. It doesn't have to be super tight, but right there is good. All right, so that's the top part done. We'll worry about the knot up here in a minute. Then you're going to pinch the rest of your tassel, oh, I don't know, a very short, maybe half an inch away from the top and you're going to take your other piece and you're going to leave enough tail that you can create a knot and you're just going to simply pull the other one tightly, as tight as you can, all the way around the entire thickness of your tassel. So I like to pause and just give it a nice tight tug. I'm going to do this a few times until I have, get that out of the way, there we go till I've got enough there that I feel like it's going to keep it tight. So you don't have to use the whole thing. Then you're going to knot both of those ends together as tightly as you can, and you're going to do it at least twice. If you're unsure of your knot or you're using a slip slippery thread, definitely do it more than twice. 
then you're just going to, if you've got one thread that kind of wants to lie down nice and flat with the others, leave it. The other one you can thread up in your yarn needle and just pull it, sort of go back down through the middle of all those wrapped lengths. So find the middle, kind of just very carefully stick your needle through there. You don't want to jab yourself. There we go. And pull it down and through. That'll keep it nice and tidy. Then you're going to take your scissors. You're going to find kind of the middle of all those strings. And you're going to snip them. Make sure you've got them all. Then the fun part, you can just sort of trim that up. It's probably best to do this over a little waste paper basket. Just so all of those little fluffs kind of get caught in the same place. Make the bottom as even as you can. And there's your little tassel. Cute as a button. All right. We're going to take the top. We're going to tie a little tiny knot up at the top. So this time you're going to try and push that, that loop as close to the end as you possibly can so that you've got a nice big open space in here to work with. You're going to find the top, maybe the middle of a V-stitch or the middle of a space, and you're just going to poke that knotted end through the space, split the two ends or the two parts of that yarn, grab your tassel, pull it through, and tighten it up. And if you've got long tails left behind on your little knot, just weave them into the back of your bookmark because that will ensure even more so that your little tassel stays where you put it. And of course that is going to hang out the top of your bookmark, or your book I should say, when your bookmark's in use. If you're giving this as a gift, you might want to consider blocking it. So get it a little damp, kind of pull out the little points in the corners, lay it flat on a towel to dry overnight, at least 24 hours, before you send it off to someone. It's another reason I love bookmark projects. They're a little lightweight gift that you can send to someone in the mail, with or without the book. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed making this along with us this week, and we will see you soon here on the Jada and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a great week. Bye, everyone! Hi everybody, Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.